Now this is the model equation for tank one. We will individually write the model equation for the two tanks and uh, we, we basically our goal is to find the overall transfer function. Here our goal is to find the overall transfer function. So we will start with writing the model for both the tanks separately. We will find their transfer functions, individual transfer functions. Then we will go to develop the overall transfer function. So in, uh, in terms of deviation variable, we can write the model equation for tank one in this form. The second equation basically is written in terms of deviation variables. Now similarly, we can write the model equation for tank two. Am I audible student? Anyone can respond? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah, thank you. So this is the model equation for tank two. In fact, that equation is also written in deviation variable. Now, if we solve these two equations, we get this form. I am directly giving you the equation. If we solve these two equations for one for tank one, another for tank two, after taking Laplace transform, we get this form of equation. You see, this is obviously the transfer function of the tank one. This is transfer function of tank one. This equation is basically the transfer function of tank one. H1 bar prime is by if I bar prime is. Similarly, we get the overall transfer function for this interacting tank in this form. This is the overall transfer function of the interacting tank systems. Overall transfer function we write in terms of H2 bar prime by if I bar prime. So these two equations are directly given to you. I mean, I am giving to you. I repeat, this is the transfer function for tank one. And this is the transfer function for tank overall system for both the tanks. Can you tell me what Overall transfer function we get for non interacting tank system in the last class. Anyone? This is the overall transfer function for interacting tank system. KP1, uh, KP2 upon tau P1 S plus 1 into tau P2 S plus 1. So, which term is additionally present here? In this interacting tank system, one term is additionally present. I think this equation we got in the last class for non-interacting tank system. Agree? Yes, sir. Yes. Now you compare these two last equations. Which term is the additional term present in the interacting tank? 
this one this one is additional term i repeat this overall transfer function we get today for interacting tank system and this overall transfer function for non interacting tank system we got in the last class so if you compare this two a1 r2 is the additional term which is present in the interacting tank system fine now what do you think for the interacting tank system what is the overall <laughs> system response what is the overall system response it's first order or second order for the non interacting tank system if two first order tanks are connected in series we got second order system what about today if two first order tanks interacting tanks are connected in series what is the overall system response it's first order or second order sir it is second order because second order this is second order obviously you see okay now based on this study let us draw a couple of conclusions remarks you can say so this is our first remark what i told these two equations differ only by the term e1 r2 and this is the main culprit and we can think of as the interaction factor this e1 r2 is responsible for this interaction or it's better to say it represents the interaction so we can think this a1 r2 term as the interaction factor this is our first comment second one is as i told connecting to first order systems in series is second order system which is quite obvious from our overall transfer function okay if we connect to first order systems in series we get overall second order system it is quite obvious from our derived transfer function now we want to see whether this is overdamped response or underdamped response this provides overdamped response or underdamped response this part we want to discuss in our third remark fine for non interacting tank system we got over damped response previously so similarly we want to see today you see these are the poles it should also be over damped because you can see the determinant the one the thing under the square root is greater than 0 yes correct what's your number uh, ch uh, 30018 Yes, correct. So this is greater than one. Here, all the terms are positive. I mean, tau p one, tau p two, a one, r two, they are positive terms. Okay. So we are getting two distinct and real poles. thus the response of interacting capacities is always overdamped so previously we got for non interacting tank system the overall response is overdamped response today for the interacting tank systems we are discussing and for this as well i mean for this also we have the overdamped response overall system response is overdamped response so for for the uh, 
higher order system, second and higher order systems, we have pointed out that there are two ways to get the second or higher order systems. One was multi capacity process. If you recall, I am telling just two options we have discussed. I mean, just highlighted one was multi capacity process. That means if we if we just connect more number of first order systems in series, we get higher order response. Second option was first order system plus controller. That gives us second order response. I hope you can recall these two issues. One is the multi capacity process. Second one is the controller plus first order process that gives second order process. Fine. Now for the first case, I mean multi capacity process, we get over damped response. And for the process plus controller that we want to observe in our next discussion. So this one we want to discuss now. First order process. If it is employed with a controller. We get overall. Second order process response. This one we want to discuss now. So for this we would like to take this example system. Which is. A liquid tank system you see. You just draw this schematic. So anything is missing from this schematic diagram? Student. Can anyone sensor. tell what sensor? Yes, sensor. sensor. Yes. Yes. Sensor is not there. You include that sensor. OK. You include the sensor in the control configuration. So here FC means flow control. In the control block, I have written FC. FC is basically the flow controller. So as I mentioned in the tabulated form in the right hand side, which indicates that our control objective is to maintain the height at its desired level. And that we want to maintain by manipulating F0. So that's why F0 is our manipulated variable, right? So this is our model equation, which we derived and discussed before. For this example system, this is our model equation. And this model equation we discussed before. So this basically represents the open loop process. And this is the controller. You just note down this controller uh, because still it is not discussed. In fact, we are going to discuss this controller perhaps in the next class. For the time being, uh, you just remember this. This is PIE controller. We will discuss perhaps in the next class details of this control schemes. So controller equation basically correlates the manipulated variable and control variable that we have discussed during our degrees of freedom analysis. During our degrees of freedom analysis, we came to know that 
controller basically correlates the manipulated variable with controlled variable, which is quite obvious from this equation as well. Okay. In this equation, this FOS, basically the steady state value of FO. You can note down this. This FOS is the steady state value of FO. KC and tau y, they are control parameters. They are basically tuning parameters. You need to determine them. In this PI controller equation, KCI and, and KC and tau y are basically the controller parameters and they are tuning parameters. I mean, we need to tune them. Now, H prime, you know, that is according to the definition of deviation variable, that is instantaneous H minus steady state value of H. According to the definition of deviation variable, H prime is basically the instantaneous H minus steady state value of H. Now let us discuss briefly about the uh, physical significant physical understanding of this PI control. I mean, what we understand, what uh, we we do by this by using this controller. You you see the first point. If H prime is zero, that means H equal to H S. It means the process runs at steady state condition. So if we substitute in this PI controller equation H prime zero, we get F naught equal to F naught S. Okay. That means our output flow rate is equal to the steady state value of its flow rate. And there is no change of bulb opening. If H prime equal to zero, that means H equal to HS. It means the process runs at steady state condition, which is also uh, possible to know if we substitute in this PI controller equation H prime zero we get F naught equal to F naught S or F O equal to F O S. Hmm, that means. Sir, uh, we, the, yes, tell. Uh, sir, the integral term might be non-zero, right? So how can we say F zero equals to F zero S? If H prime is zero, integral term will not be zero. Not necessarily, I think. I think means. Uh, because uh, if h prime is zero, uh, it it might be that previously some integral had accumulated, and that might not be zero. Can you give the value of integration of zero dt? That would be uh, zero, but okay. In the second case, you see, if h prime is less than zero. You can easily understand the second point as well. You see, if H prime is less than zero, that means H equal to H S. So our steady state value is more than the instantaneous height. Now again, you consider the PI controller equation. And you see that if not is must be greater than if not. So 
So physically it is somewhat like this. If height is lower than HS, the controller should try to elevate the liquid height. So how you can elevate the liquid height? By reducing F0. I repeat, if H0 less than 0, our height goes down below the set point value. So controller should increase the liquid height. So you physically think how the controller can increase the liquid height by reducing the F0. It is also indicated from PI controller equation. If you substitute here H0 negative, then obviously this F0S is greater than F0. So third point is just reverse, you see. Third point is just to reverse of point two. If height is more than set point value or steady state value, then controller should try to reduce the liquid height. And that can be possible. That is possible only through increasing F0. This third point also we can explain by using the PIE controller equation. Okay, so this is a uh, physical explanation of the PI controller, which uh, I have written here. And as I told, we will discuss perhaps in the next class details of this PI controller. Okay. Now we are just going to substitute that controller equation in our model equation. You see, a dh prime dt plus f not equal to f i prime. Instead of f not prime, we have substituted here PI controller equation. In this model, F0 is replaced by the controller equation. In fact, F0 prime. F0 prime is replaced by the controller equation. So this is our closed loop model. See, our goal is to observe whether it is second order or not. First order liquid tank system we have considered. We have employed one PI controller. Now we want our goal is to find whether this transfer function is second order or not. Let us proceed accordingly. We would like to find the transfer function. So let us take the Laplace transform. First order system we have taken, then one controller is employed. Now you want to investigate whether the overall response is second order not or not. So if we take the Laplace transform, we get this equation. And rearranging this equation, we see this form of transfer function we get. Take the Laplace transform and rearrange the equation. To get the transfer function. You see it is obviously the transfer function. I mean transfer function of a second order system. This is obviously the transfer function of a second order system. OK. Can you tell me what is the expression for zeta? Anyone?
What is the expression for zeta? Sir, it will be 1 by 2 root over Kc tau i by a. Yes, what's your number? Uh, 19CH10037. Hmm. Correct. Three double zero one nine. Sasan Gautam, are you there? Yes, sir. What is tau? What is the expression for tau? Are you doing it? Yes, sir. Hmm. Tell me then. Sivam Raj, Sivans Raj, 30020. 30021. Yes, sir. Yeah, tell. Um, it will come out to be A into tau i divided by Kc whole to the power 0.5. Yeah, great. Right. Sasang Gautam. Yes. Got? Yes, sir. Tell. Sir, root over A tau i by Kc. Yeah. Okay, correct. Now you want to say. See, first thing uh, is that we, we got the second order response. First order process plus PIE controller, overall response is second order. Now, second issue is whether it is overdamped or underdamped. That we want to discuss. First remark, as I told, liquid level system. We are employing one PI controller. And overall response is second order response. Second issue is whether it is over damped or under damped. So. So we do not know about KC tower and A values. OK. So we do not know about KC tower I and A values. Zeta depends on those values. So accordingly, we can write in this way. If it is less than two, then it is underdamped. And if it is greater than two, it is overdamped. If it is less than two, it is underdamped because zeta is coming less than one. And if it is greater than two, it is overdamped. So it basically depends on Kc, tau y, and a value. Okay. So for the multi capacity processes, we got overdamped response. But for the process with controller, it may be any one among these three. It may be underdamped, it may be critically damped, it may be overdamped, depending on mainly the tuning parameters. And A is also present. Cross section of the liquid tank is also there. Fine. So this is all about you know, first order and second order processes. So, so far we have discussed the first order system and second order system. Now next we are not going to discuss third order system. In fact, we are trying to comment. We are trying to make some remarks based on the study we have so far on first order and second order system. And based on this, we want to make some remarks on higher order system.
I repeat, we have discussed so far first order system and second order system. And next we are not going to discuss third order system. We are just extending our remarks based on this study to the higher order systems. OK, so we'll discuss mainly these three topics. Suppose there are n first order processes in series. We will also discuss processes having date time. Followed by. Processes with inverse response. Three classes of higher order systems we'll discuss. One is in first order processes in series. Second one is processes with date time. And third one is processes with inverse response. First one we will try to extend based on our discussion on first order and second order process. I mean we want to extend our observations or remarks you can say. To the in first order processes. And second and third topics, they are definitely new to us. OK, let us uh, discuss the first one. So in capacities in series. So as I mentioned previously, we have discussed dynamics of second order systems. And we just want to extend those conclusions to the systems of n capacities. So let us first start with the n interacting capacities. Sorry, non interacting capacities. For n capacities, we'll discuss or we'll extend the conclusions separately for non interacting, followed by interacting systems. In capacities, first we will discuss non interacting case followed by interacting case. For non interacting capacities, we will have overtime response. S set, it is sigmoidal safe. And definitely, as the number of capacities increase, the sluggishness also increase. As the number increases, the sluggishness also increases. That we have seen graphically in one case. I am going to show that plot again. Second one is increase the number of capacities in series, increases the sluggishness of the response. If we increase the number of capacities or number of tanks, it becomes more sluggish. The overall response becomes more sluggish. And this is our overall transfer function for in non interacting capacities connected in series. This is the overall transfer function for in capacities connecting connected in series. OK, it is just the multiplication of individual transfer functions. Uh, sir. Yes, so for n equal to 2, this equation is not uh, giving what we got. We got K yeah. 2 by tau 1 s plus 1 tau 2 s plus 1. Yeah, I got I got. But if you if you. Uh, if you just. Uh, 
connect the blocks, no? Like G1, G2, G3, uh, and you write uh, starting from F to Y1, Y2, Y3, then you will have this one. For that specific case, you are true. We got uh, KP2 by tau P1S plus tau P2S. That's fine. But this is true for the general case. It is somewhat like this. There are blocks. For the first block, input is F, output is Y1. For the second block, input is Y1, output is Y2. For the third block, input is Y2, output is Y3. Then you will have this transfer function. Okay. Yes, sir. I understood. Yeah. But for that specific case, what you told that is correct. So this is about the non-interacting case, but for interacting capacities, you know, interaction increases the sluggishness of overall response. You can recall this figure I have shown before. What comments we made, many of them we can understand from here. So this is second order non-interacting. This is second order interacting. You see this first point I have written here. Interaction increases the sluggishness of overall response. Fine. And this is second order non-interacting. This is fourth order non-interacting. As order increases, the system response becomes sluggish. So two comments we made before. One is interaction increases the sluggishness. And second one is if order increases, the system response becomes more sluggish. But what overall transfer function I have written here for non-interacting system? We cannot have so straightforward expression for interacting system. Fine. That's why it is not written here under the remarks. For the non-interacting case, this overall transfer function we can write in very straightforward way. You see here. But for n interacting capacities, the overall transfer function we cannot write in such straightforward way. In fact, we have experience for the second order system itself. One additional term A1, R2 comes in the denominator. Okay, so we have to individually formulate this overall transfer function. There is no general expression for overall transfer function. That's it. Now come to our second topic. That is dynamic systems with date time. So let us first uh, understand what is the date time. Let us first understand what is the date time. So we are denoting the date time by tau suffix D. We are denoting the date time by T suffix D or sometimes in many textbook it is represented by tau suffix d. Now to discuss this or to understand this date time concept, let us consider a pipe here. You see, the inlet flow rate is Fi and outlet flow rate from that pipe is F0. Now you can understand from this, from these two plots. If we increase this FI, suppose at 12 noon, we cannot get that increased quantity with this F0 at the same time, 12 noon. It takes some time. So that is basically the date time. It's quite obvious from these two plots, you see.
Is this clear? Shohib Nazir, one double zero six zero. Tridipta Das, one double zero six one. Yes, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Good. So as I mentioned, suppose we are increasing this FI flow rate at 12 o'clock. We cannot expect that increased quantity that should come out with this F naught at exactly 12 o'clock. It's not possible. Fine, that increased quantity comes out with F naught after a certain period of time. That time is basically called time lag or date time, which is reflected if you compare these two plots. Okay. Now let us uh, represent this date time through the block diagram. So this is our original process. Uh, suppose input is F and output is Y, which are you know uh, standard notations we are using consistently. And for the date time block, output is Y T minus T D. Is this OK? For the process block output is Y. And for the date time block output is Y T minus T D. Is this OK student? Can we write this? Now let us just write in Laplace domain. The second block diagram indicates all the blocks along with its flows in Laplace domain. The second block diagram includes the process, the date time, the input and output variables in Laplace domain. Can anyone tell how we got the transfer function for date time as e to the power minus TTS? Anyone can give the answer why I have written this. Date time block is represented by exponential minus TTS. Anyone? Suraj Kishore. Three double zero three one Aman Kedia three double zero three three Yes, sir. Yeah, can you tell us why the transfer function of date time is like this e to the power minus TDS? Anyone can give the answer? Charlie it is a Jane. step function, and uh, when we take the uh, inverse Laplace in that uh, in that time domain, so it will come mm. out to be of that uh, that form. Yes, correct. You are Oman Kedia. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, correct. Correct, Oman. If we take the Laplace transform, this is basically y bar s e to the power minus t ds. And this is y bar s. So transfer function is output by input. Accordingly, we get this. Now let us come to consider. See here we have already considered first order process, and this is our date time. So uh, you see, I have again separately writing. This is the process, which is a first order process, and this is the date time element. OK, this is output by input that is transfer function. 
So accordingly, we get Kp by tau Ps plus 1. In fact, here we are considering first order process, but this one we can derive this transfer function. You see this is output. This is the input. So y bar s by y bar s, those two terms are getting cancelled. So we get this transfer function. So this is the process without date time. This is the date time. Fine. Now what is the overall transfer function? This output divided by this input. Overall transfer function is. You see the date time block output. By the input to the process. So this overall transfer function is called first order plus date time system FOPDD. FOPDT. First order plus date time system. So in a similar fashion, we can write the second order plus date time process. In a similar fashion, we can write the second order plus date time system. So only the date time element is getting multiplied. Hmm. So if you consider the first order process, first order plus date time, you just write the transfer function of first order process multiplied by the date time element transfer function. Similarly, here you see second order plus date time. That means second order transfer function multiplied by the transfer function of the date time element. That's it. I mean, there is no difficulty to write this equation. OK. Now, this is a graphical representation. That compares the actual response. And the response with date time. This is a graphical representation. One is shown. I mean it compares the actual response. And delayed response. One is for the overdamped response, left side one, there is no oscillation, and right side one is for the underdamped case. Left side one is for overdamped case, and right side one for underdamped case. OK. Oh, it is also true. This is for second. Uh, yeah, this is for second order system. Yeah. Its response looks like first order case. Yes, this is for first order case. You write like this. Overdamped is accept, not like this exactly. Sorry. This is for first order system. And this is for second order system. Yeah. Because for overdamped case we have sigmoidal shape, so it does not look like sigmoidal shape. You correct what I told. This is for first order case. This is for second order case. 
Now next question is this exponential term. Basically we want to approximate this exponential term. And we will understand with time that this exponential term, I mean how it creates problem in stability analysis, in control. So before going to discuss that issue, we want to first linearize this exponential term. So this method is extensively used in process control course. Approximation of this exponential term is done by Pade approximation, which is widely used in process control course. So there are two approximations available. One is called first order approximation and second one is called second order approximation. These two approximations are widely used in process control for the exponential term. One is the first order approximation and second one is the second order approximation. The second order approximation is definitely more accurate than first order. Now if we consider this approximation, so our first order plus date time system looks like this. If you substitute the first order approximation app expression in our first order plus date time transfer function, we get this expression. You can similarly write also for the case of second order plus date time system. You can similarly substitute the first order approximation expression in the second order plus date time system and you can get the final equation. Yeah, this is all. If you have any question, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll stop here. Do you have any questions, student? No. OK, I then thank you. Understand. Which one? Tell. I could not understand why the output of uh, the dead time block was Y of T minus TD. So could you please explain That's that part once? That's why I asked you, no? Did you understand this? Anyone can give the answer why it is written like this? Y T minus T D. But then. Yeah, it is somewhat like this. See, this is the output Y. So this Y, I mean, what we are getting here, this is basically the Y which, which was before TD time. That's why it is Y T minus TD. This output is basically the Y. Why is this one? Okay, this output is basically the Y which was before TD time. So that's why it is written Y T minus TD. You got so like, it or uh, not? T here can be uh, assumed to be T naught as uh, shown in the graph, uh, in the first graph. So in that case, then T1 minus T naught is TD, right? So I, I can't correlate that. How you are thinking? It should be Y T plus TD? Um, so like uh, in the graphs shown uh, previously, uh, T1 minus T naught is the dead time, right? Yes. So um, in this case, y of t uh, so is this t, t here. Is basically, if we assume t here as t naught, 
then uh, um, then it should be y of t1 i guess then t of t not plus td like that i don't know maybe i'm thinking in a wrong way no you think physically i know every year uh, many students they do not understand in fact few are saying this is yt plus td okay you think physically like this this is y so what we are getting here now this was basically this output before td time and what okay. t not t1 that you were got it Yes, yes. No, you don't think this is y. This is y. So this output is basically what this y before T D time. Okay. Just yes. physically think, you will get the answer. Okay, sir. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Then yeah. Thank you. Thank you to everyone.